Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. Welcome to Slamfire Radio, episode 442. Today is February 10th, 2022. I am one of your hosts, Hef. I'm another host, Mo. And I'm Adriel, the hunt gear guy. Are we doing nicknames today? Is that the whole idea? Uh, I don't know. I just went with it. I, I haven't used Hef for a few episodes, so. Mm. All right. I didn't, prepare, it I didn't prepare one, sorry. <laughs> oh, good. Gotta think on your feet. Just make <laughs> something up. Just boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I'm not that good at it either, so. <laughs> and, well, how's your guys' week been? Uh, uh, busy. Grindy. Yeah. Grindy? <laughs> Grindy. Grindy. I've been a, I went, went to the lawyers today to, like, sign some paperwork from my house purchase, and that took, like, an hour and a half. I thought it'd be, like, 30 minutes. Like, just put them in front of me. I signed the stuff. Yeah, legal mumbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we had to explain it all. Yeah, very important. Very important. Yeah. Well, you yeah, got to understand everything. what you're signing, so. Sure, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a home purchase. <laughs> it's, what is it, like half a million bucks? Who cares? Yeah, yeah. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into what we did with guns. And what we did with guns is sponsored by Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer, and nice range, too. Uh, and this week... We're going to highlight the Aguila mini shells. They have them in stock. Hmm. Aguila. Wait, wait. Share screen. And... Oh, you got it? Oh, you're faster than me. Good. And there they are. Yeah, hmm. so they got the seven and a half, the buckshot, and the slugs. Nice. 34 bucks. How many are in 25 that? bucks for a box. Which, how many are in 20, the box of these? 20 Come rounds. Here. 20 rounds. That's not that bad. No, that's not bad. Inch and three quarters. Be fun. So cute. So cute. <laughs> I, I'm curious. These slugs, where are they? 1300 feet per sec? That's pretty good. That's for... quick. What are they an ounce? The, uh, seven ounce eights. slugs? They can't be. Seven, seven, seven okay. eights. Yeah. 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 Because, yeah, that was a. An ounce slug going to 1300 feet per second. Holy cow! Well, wait for uh, wait for my spot, and I'll, I'll show you what uh, what I've got in store. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, why don't you hit it off, Adriel? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me in, let me in. Okay, hey, um, hey, I did a couple things. Uh, let's see, I hit the range, I shot my 22s, I went with a listener, Thomas, uh, again out there, and uh. Shots of 22s. Um, I did the QCIF webinar that was on Sunday, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I talked about, I don't know, kind of like what I would wish I could have told myself as a college student, like what to buy, what to, what to, where to spend money and where not to spend money. Cause like this is for the colleges, right? C- Q- uh, QCIF. So I was talking about uh, training and uh, what kind of guns to buy or what kind of gear to buy and spend a lot versus spend a little and, uh, and that kind of thing. It's a good time. Good time had by more, all. Was this more geared like recreationally or competition or both? Both. Both. I talked about both. Okay. Yeah. I assume that most college students can't really afford to do like a proper cut. Co- like co- college students cannot afford to do three guns straight up. It's too expensive. Uh, yeah. But Ipsic maybe, or yeah. uh, Maple Seed, or maybe, you know, kind of maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you were just talking about uh, slugs in these like tiny little uh, three quarter inch. Check this guy out. That is focus a oh, yeah. one ounce slug going 1200 fps. Ooh, kind of, uh, oh. It's not bad, it's not bad. Look at how cute these oh. little shells are. <laughs> <laughs> that is impressive. one ounce slug <laughs> 1200 feet per second. Uh, I think it's pretty impressive to get 1200 out of that thing. This that is impressive. Package. Wow, crazy. Uh, 
I got some shot too. 15 16 ounce for the uh, for the shot, but it's going 1145 and it will refuse to focus. But uh, same idea, a little shot cool. shots here too. Okay, yeah, with a shotgun I picked up for a buddy of mine. I was on the right side of the city to 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 grab it, but uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to go to the range and shoot those. I wonder if they would run in a pump. You think so? Not in the I semi. think that's about one of the only things they would run out of is a pump or a break but, action. I got a break action. I can try like that. Uh, eight seventy with their double bar. That mm-hmm. I think you could get them to cycle in that. I know if it's only got a single action bar, you'll end up mm-hmm. double loading. I think. I think I mm. heard guys doing that where it drops two shells instead of one. Oh, well, okay. I'll try it in my semi-auto, and I'll try it in a break action, and maybe I don't have pump any action. pumps, so no semi. Sorry, it's got to work in a semi <laughs> <laughs> or a break action. I don't know. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And then I got uh, I got this thing in the mail, Primary Arms One uh, X Cyclops. This is the uh, their mini One X uh, optic. It's so small. Look at it. It's so small. Oh, yeah. uh, this is a prism optic, so you don't have the uh, astigmatism issues that you would with uh, a red dot with some people who have uh, astigmatism. Um, it's got enough mounts. like they, they, they give you so many different t- types of mounts that are stackable and whatnot. But I think, what are there? Five, eight, eight mounting heights you can do. So like mm. really good uh, flexibility on the height of this thing. Uh illuminated shake awake style uh, illumination on it, or just don't use the illumination and just use the aimer, I guess um, it's, it uses the um, primary arms has this ACSS reticle. It's kind of like a half horseshoe and a little uh, uh, Trijicon Chevron kind of a thing in the middle, um, which might not be bad for three gun. Cause like the, the, the single point in the middle for accuracy, but like that, anything in that horseshoe, just send it, just wrap on the trigger and, uh, and let her rip. Uh, I think that might work. And the eye relief on it is actually not bad. So it's best right around there, which is about uh, three inches. But you can use it further or closer fairly easily. So, what are you going to test it on? I don't know. Okay. Um, I, so I have, a, I have an Aimpoint Pro on my uh, three-gun rifle right now. Um, this would potentially replace that. It's quite a bit smaller and lighter than the Aimpoint mm. Pro. Okay. Um, and I don't know. I don't really know if there's going to be much of a difference between the two of them to tell you the, uh, uh, the honest truth. I don't have astigmatism, so it doesn't matter whether like the red dots don't look blown out or weird shapes or anything like that for me. Um, I just think it's neat. The price was right. And, uh, they're new to the country. So I thought I'd get one and, uh, and do a review and whatnot of it. So cool. Yeah. Uh, we had a Maple Seed shoot boss call, and I'm talking to all kinds of ranges and setting stuff up on that still. Battery bag testing. I don't know if I can reach it. Uh, maybe I can here. Let me see if I can get myself on screen here, see what I can knock over. I am testing battery banks. So right now I've got this hooked up to a, a vest, and I've okay. got that thing tracking how much power is going into this vest uh, over time. Huh. I finished all the smaller battery banks, and now I'm doing the bigger ones just to see, like, tested versus actual like how much how much power can you actually pull out of these things um because it's not what none of them are will actually put out the power that they're rated for and uh that varies quite a bit so i thought i would test that between them it takes a long time though because <laughs> that thing it, it was 10 watts the vest was 10 watts now it only do five watts because one of the elements burned out because i left it on for like 20 hours <laughs> oh, on, on max what- is that your vest that the switch gets hot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, just the switch by itself takes uh, 0.7 and of an amp. Now I know because I want to fly. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, at five, yeah. So it's like right around like three or four watts, I guess. Um, yeah, too much, too much. Uh, oh, and then uh, so for like Chaz three gun, we've uh, on Facebook, I've noticed lots of guys like really like want to get into three gun this year. And they've been, they've been asking a bunch of uh, questions on Facebook. So I was like, oh man, you know what we should do is just like a live call. So uh, I'm going to be hosting a, a live call tomorrow night uh, for anyone interested in, in three gun for Chaz or anywhere really uh, just to discuss like gear and newbie stuff and like getting into practice score and all that kind of stuff. Cause everyone's going to have the same questions anyways. Everyone's going to like fire them on Facebook as, as they think of them. But 
I could just be a better idea to get a couple of the uh, more seasoned shooters and uh, and just answer those kind of questions uh, live on air kind of a thing. So yeah, that's a great oh, idea. That's yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna do that tomorrow tomorrow night. And I mean, like Friday evening, like have a beer and like chat three again with some guys, right? So yeah, yeah, it'll be a fun time. Um, I think that's about it for me. I might do a little bit of shooting this weekend, uh, but then next week I'll be moving. No, not moving yet, but coming soon, coming soon. Coming soon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's about it for me. What about you, Mo? I renewed my membership at the Galt Sportsman Club in uh, Cambridge or near Cambridge, Ontario. I had debated not renewing it because I'm many, many, many hours away from it. And uh, sometimes I'm going every two months or whatever. So uh, I usually go back to Ontario once a month, but I don't always get a chance to go there. But then I thought about it, the like for what it cost and having to go through if I ever went back and having to go through like the 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 club safety course again and and going on waiting lists because you have to wait for you have to be on a waiting list for the rifle section. You have to be on a waiting list for the for the clay section. So I figured, you know what? I might as well just renew it. It's not super expensive. And uh, it's actually a really nice range too. Like one of the nicer ones that I've been to. So, uh, and I, I happened and I went there on the weekend as well with my friend, Darren. And we shot three rounds of skeet and I hadn't shot in like many, many months. So I, I didn't hit much, but it, we still have, we, we end up talking and having a good time and I'm pretty casual about it. So that's really cool. Uh, he brought, and then we went over to the handgun section. I'm not a member, so I was just like his guest for it. Uh, and, um, he brought a buck mark, the Browning buck mark 22. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was the first time shooting that. So we, we both shot it together and it was a lot of fun. Uh, cause they have steel, they have steel hangers at like 25 yards, 50. So we were just mixing up the distances and stuff. And, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I also, uh, went to an IPSC match. And so on my way back, I stopped in, in Peterborough and, uh, I went to the match. There it was an indoor one, of course, uh, five stages, two shorter ones, one medium and, and, uh, and then a long one. And, uh, it was like some good stages and it was a lot of fun. A great group of people. I did. Okay. Um, I cleansed the, uh, the, the, DQ from my system. So at least I felt, <laughs> but I, you know what? It sucks because I went into it with anxiety, like as if I was starting over and I was like, Ugh. and I like, I, I wish I didn't have that feeling, but unfortunately I did. But then once it was over, I was like, okay, this is good. <laughs> and yeah, and you know you, what? Once you start and once yeah, you start and, shooting again. Yeah. And there were, and there were two stages where they, where, where they force you to go, where they force you to go backwards too. So uh, it was good to like, do that at speed and, and be comfortable doing it. Right. Not worrying about, you know, I, I'm going to mess up here. And uh, so that was, so that was good. Um, and then I also registered for another sick match. That's going to be in a couple of weeks at the RA center in Ottawa. So this was one that was supposed to be last month and then it got canceled because of the, because of the restrictions. So that one, that one will be, should be fun. I've been to I've been to one other one and it was great. So um that's really that's really it for me. How about you, Kyle? Uh well, I uh took the Gersan out, did some testing with it on the weekend, and I was gonna put out a video, but I think I'm gonna make it all in one. I got some more testing to do it on this weekend because just say it didn't quite live up to my expectations so i'm gonna try some things try some things this weekend see if i can't get it running better and take some more footage and get the video out there just do it all in one is max 20 minute video probably so what was the biggest issue it not cycling okay not cycling light stuff right Did yeah cycle yeah light exactly stuff what, it, um i ended up getting some after i was done filming and everything i ended up getting up getting some uh, ounce and an eighth ran some mm-hmm. through it and it ran it fine but okay the, the the lighter stuff it it wasn't running and it was there was some stuff in there that i thought yeah it, it should be able to run it so i'm actually gonna go and 
do a break in on it. Some some of these uh, semi-auto shotguns require a break in, so take a couple boxes of buckshot out, run it through them, give it a clean, and then try it again and see how it goes. Okay. So yeah, the testing continues on that. Also out at the range on Saturday doing the wall, and we almost got that done. And we're actually going to be back out there again this Saturday and probably get the wall construct. Well, probably, I imagine we will have the wall construction completely done and ready for fill after Saturday. So that'll be good. It just sucks as all our sand is frozen. So we might have to wait a little bit just before we can get the fill, but we'll see how it goes. Other than that, uh, my WK came in on Friday last week. And then yesterday, a bunch of my parts came in. So I got started uh, putting together my WK. So here it is. Just WK. Already got my optic and my 45 irons on there. In fact, let's do this because this shows it a little bit better. I put on, I stole this from my uh, AR, my extended mag release mm -hmm. uh -huh. and that's the oversized magwell i was talking about and look how nice geometry that is looks better Way it's better. hard to see because your your connection's a bit uh uh giffy i guess you could oh, say okay. but uh yeah it looks the, it does look like a cleaner yeah you, could, yeah you could see where'd you get yeah. that thing where'd you get the magwell uh, true north arms hmm. ah yeah. and then Actually, Friday, I went on to Spectre Ballistics, and they actually had the green charge handles in stock, so I ordered a couple of those up, and those come in. Nice. Nice. And, yeah. One really cool thing is I was kind of wondering with the mag extension, was with the D60, and it fits. So ah. nice. When you run a mag an oversized mag well a lot of times he'll come up with that it won't do the d60 so i was very happy when it did good do you um, know if this uh if this mag well adapter works on the on the w uh, the the mcr i do not know it's 29 yeah. bucks it's so cheap it is it, it is 3d printed but it it fits nice it's very well tapered it Looks ma cool matches too. it matches up and yeah it's got this cool little hex pattern in there so I'll yeah i'll do some seracode on that uh handguard but the uh, carbon fiber handguard buttstock and grip are gonna have to wait but i did put the i did have a spare uh coal components six six hmm. element it's kicking around so i threw that on there took the mag pull one that it came with off and oh yeah there was a accuracy ring from true north arms as well it's just a rubber o-ring to go and stiffen up the Stop mating that. between yep. the upper and lower hmm. Hmm. so overall coming together i like the mag well i think i might ask them if it works on the oh it says not compatible with the wsm sierra damn it oh, oh you were looking i was looking at i was looking it up too <laughs> <laughs> oh well oh we well. have to buy a WK. <laughs> uh, other than that, I ended up, while well, I was talking with a buddy who's I'm going to be carpooling with down to Arizona at the end of March, and he mentioned another match the following weekend of, the, of Superstition Mountain. So we got talking, figuring everything out, and ended up adding another match to my uh, U.S. trip. Nice. So we will be heading down to Arizona. We're going to probably try and hit up uh, Sops in Utah for their Tuesday Night Steel just before that. Hit up uh, Arizona for Superstition Mountain and then take our time because the next match is in Texas, about three hours east of San Antonio. Hmm. So drive to San, basically drive past San Antonio shoot that match and then it will be bomb right back back up but it's about i think we figured out 35 hours from san antonio to edmonton and with two of us driving we'll just be driving constantly 35 hours huh well it's not bad because 36 hours from 
Grand Prairie to Phoenix. So it's actually not bad. It'll be, it'll be a lot of driving because, yeah, it's like 15 hours from Phoenix to San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, getting that worked out and looking forward to that because that's in just over a month that we're supposed to be hitting the road for that. So. Coming, yeah. coming quick. Yeah, it's coming very quick. We were talking about it and I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. Yeah. Get my stuff not, in order, and <laughs> it's not that far away. <laughs> no, but it'll, it'll be an awesome trip. I'm really looking forward to that one. And it's well, it's been two years since I did the U.S. trip, so it, hmm. looking forward to going back down mm-hmm. there and shooting something down there. Yeah, that's some a couple of cool cities to go to as well. Yeah, oh, I, I like Phoenix, and I haven't really been east of Arizona, that kind of line down the U.S. So it'll be cool to drive through. And that's the thing, driving, not flying. So you get to see all the countryside stop yeah. basically wherever you want. And so be a cool trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But other than that, that's it for me. So why don't we get on to upcoming events? Wait, wait, wait. Before you get oh, in wait, there, wait. I, I looked something. So one thing I wanted wait, to know, wait. what's what's the battery life on this thing? Okay, so it's a prism. It's not a red dot. And it uses a uh, 2032 battery. Normally that wouldn't be very good, right? Three years. Okay. Three on medium. Three mm. years. That's crazy. Uh, with a, like with a single uh, twenty thirty two. Yeah. Hmm. You know, like uh, uh, my yeah. my impression of like uh, illuminated reticles and that kind of thing is like you leave them on, and you leave them on between range trips. They're dead by the time you get to the next range trip. Uh, mm-hmm. That has changed because, like, we we we've had efficient red dots for. 10 years, maybe five to 10 years, something like that. A lot more. And, and pretty much everyone has put out like all the red dots recently are all, are all efficient. And they'll last for like years in the last like five years or so. Hollow suns, vortexes, like they're all, they're, they're all lasting really long. The prisms and the aluminum illuminated reticles, not so much, but I guess they're changing that too, because like I would never have expected that they can do a three year illuminated reticle on a, on a 2032. That's nuts. Yeah. Well, that's got an auto shut off too, right? That probably helps yeah. it. I don't know if they count that in there, but uh, three years. Yeah. That's still yeah. Love if it. you if you that'll be like that'll be the ultimate test is put it in try there. It if out. it can last, yeah, try it out. It last three years and awesome. <laughs> I'm, I still got my aim point with the, with the first battery I, I put in it, or maybe did I change it out? I might have changed it out just like proactively, but hmm. they have about the same life lifespan, three years at whatever number seven or something like that okay cool sorry i just had to like jump in there like illuminator radicals i had not known that they would uh they would go that long these days yeah that's pretty good all right upcoming events upcoming events is sponsored by telus alpha telus alpha is a canadian digital agency that works exclusively in the firearms vertical They help with business processes, strategic planning, websites, e-commerce, and battling the stigma the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, and social media. You can check them out at telosalpha.com. And before we get into upcoming events, yeah, yeah, well, Justin Heller here asked a question. Uh, If I applied for my Form 6, they wouldn't let me put my MCR on it last year. I uh, I haven't because I needed to have all my guns in hand to do that. So that's probably filling that out this weekend and sending it off. I've, I've had it within a week usually, but so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I did hear those stories about the, the WKs and the MCRs not getting on there, like being denied right away. But then guys were saying well, they sent in the FRT for that firearm and okay yeah no sorry our mistake because they were under the understanding that uh it was just all center fire semi-auto rifles were banned so Hmm. so yeah when i do file for my form six i'll be attaching the frt for the wk in with that just to eliminate that possibility just proved them yeah no this was taken today and it's still legal so so yeah but back to events there's Lunatic Tactical Shotgun Mania Challenge, August 26th to 28th. 
You can go, go uh, register and get any details on practice score or contact me, whatever you want. We also have the two gun winter brutality and night shoot in Quinell, BC on March 5th. And details are also on practice score, register on practice score as well. And then the full auto four stage pistol match at Colby Shooting Club in Waterloo, Ontario, also on March 5th. And same thing, go on practice score to register or get any details, contact info information, that type of stuff. And ladies days, Kelly, our Kelly, uh, aka the CCFR women's division is looking for su to support slash sponsor ladies days events at your range. Uh, this is a range driven initiative, but if you want their sponsorship and their support, you can contact Kelly at slamfireradio.com or info at firearmsrights.ca. And we've talked before, like they have a whole package to help you go through and run the event and everything. So it's, it, it's not just a plaque. They, they help you with your organization of it too. Like they run enough events that they got it down that can help you out a lot. The experts, yep. Yeah. yeah. Then we'll get on to the news. What do you got for news? Uh, yeah, this first bit is uh, something that just came out today, actually. Uh, the CCFR kind of shared this letter that uh, uh, was sent from the uh, government to Canadian firearms retailers, and it's basically asking them for help in the <laughs> upcoming... Uh, uh, it's not a buyback. What would you call it? Forced paid confis uh, theft. Theft. Well, it's paid theft. theft. Conf confiscation with compensation. Yeah, yeah. Confiscation with compensation. Um, basically, they're asking the industry for all the information. Like, how much? Because uh, isn't the due date, due date coming up? What April or something like that? April 30th. Yeah. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, <laughs> no one's been working. I thought you were working on that. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, how much are your guns? And how much are, like, how much do people spend on guns and, yeah. like, accoutrements <laughs> and whatnot? And they're just like, I don't know. This, I think this is like, uh, uh, what would you call it? Hail Mary. Uh, oh, shit. We forgot to do yeah, this for a, last few years. a desperation yeah. last minute. Yeah. 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 Two yeah, years. Who needs two years? Two. We'll do it in two months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? If the retailers cooperate, which they really shouldn't, uh, I really hope not. They should ex completely exaggerate the costs of everything, and I mean exaggerate yeah. heavily. Well, yeah. they're prohibited, so it's got to be street price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, downtown Toronto, you could probably fetch like three grand yeah. for this. <laughs> Toker F. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just they're just there's there's such clowns about everything, everything they do, but yeah, yeah, total clown world. Yeah. Uh speaking of clown world, uh the next <laughs> article we have here is guns used in crime are not coming from the US, or sorry, are coming from the US, not legal gun owners, uh police chiefs. Uh so this is updated. What? This is uh two days ago, and uh the vast majority of crime guns seized in Canada's biggest city. Last year came from the United States, and the number was 86%. So of the firearms, where they mm. could trace the origin, 86% were smuggled into Canada from the U.S. Trend yeah. that has been on the increase since 2019. And I mean, you could see why. It's right across the border. Yeah. Just drive a trunk full of yeah, handguns right and uh, you know, sell them for a lot more than you paid for them. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that the 14% are actually like stolen from legal ownership or straw purchases they're just ones that they don't identify right and well and a cr like think about crime gun like what's a crime gun okay well um uh and, and going <laughs> off their definition it's pretty permissive so like there's some there's some times where it, that gun might not even been used in the crime yeah. it was just like i don't know the guy had a firearm at his house and it was in the vicinity but it had nothing to do with yeah what the person yeah. was arrested for well, right don't they include airsoft and even like Nerf guns into that? For this one to be like I that I, high, I, 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 I would imagine. Were... I, I I have two two, but for eighty six percent, I would imagine that that's real crime guns because they they like that yeah. couldn't by include definition, all those other ones. yeah, yeah. It, it, the the yeah. numbers wouldn't make sense. Eighty six is a high number. That's that's a very high number. 
Um, and for like it, for if they said 14% were like stolen or uh, the person legally owned them or whatever, that would make sense to me. It's still it's still a massive outweighing of uh, legal or illegal to legal, yeah. like smuggled versus non. Uh, but 86% makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So like when people talk about um, all this legislation we're adding on, actually, I was, I was talking with some other people about um, like what what legislation has been proven in studies to have effect. And, and there are some that that have effect, uh, but they're like the real like basic bitch legislation uh, that you would put in for gun stuff like safe storage um, licensing. But beyond that, it gets it, like the diminishing returns are so bad. To where like five round magazines or no suppressors or a lot of the other stuff we have, like you, you would never be able to measure an effect from that kind of stuff. I mean, no. uh, in the U.S., so they had this fantastic natural experiment. Some states uh, uh, ran right to carry as a uh, as a the, uh, uh, yep. shall issue or a must issue, yep. uh, and some didn't. So they had this fantastic experiment where lots of states were very similar in in uh, crime and other things, and one of them enabled it and the other one didn't. So they had lots of fantastic data on that kind of thing. They couldn't tell the difference. Like if you just ran the numbers, you can't tell the difference between whether the states ran it or not. So what that says is like even something that feels like it would be um, fairly impactful, either uh, on one side, blood running in the streets from legal yeah. gun owners shooting each other up over like uh, fender benders or something like that. Or on the other side, uh, legal gun owners like defending themselves against criminals in the end. It's a wash. It's, it's, you yeah. can hardly yeah. even tell the difference. You can't see a difference in like homicides or anything like that. So, um, like for 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 stuff like this, yeah, it's gun legislation is not super impactful on homicides, suicides, and these kind of makes, things. And makes sense. Yeah, when we had uh, Doctor Langman on, he, he he said as much. You know, um, we 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 ran. He he has done studies multiple times that show that um, uh, Canada's firearms laws since I think the mid nineties just haven't had an impact on homicides or suicides in Canada. No, no appreciable mm-hmm. measurable difference. All that like yeah, hand wringing and like, Ooh, what about this? What about that thing? Oh, that blaze 47. We've got to get that out. Like all this stuff is for nothing. It does nothing. Yeah. Oh, Agreed. God. it's, it's oh, unmeasurable. I, I absolutely Agreed. believe that. And I like Kyle's comment about, Suppressors should be considered PPE. Absolutely. Agreed. Every other country has them. Yeah. <laughs> they have them in Europe, all yeah. over the place. They have them in the US. Yeah. And Canada's like, no, assassins will use that. What about all these other countries? I don't see a lot of Yeah, like it's it's, yeah. <laughs> it's so illogical. Like if you have a suppressor, you're more likely to go assassinate somebody. It's hey. it's not it makes the gun really long. And if you're running like a center fire or something that's supersonic, anyways, you can still tell where the shot's coming from. No. Yeah. It's like the whole mag- uh, restricted magazines. Do we really think that they prevented a single uh, mass shooting in the last, you know, few decades because of no. restricted? It's it's just nonsense. That's you just know? a feel good one. It's nope. a feel good one. Have, yeah, you can't have a mass shooting in Canada. Our magazines only go to five. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. Like the person's going to be. <laughs> I was going to go out and kill a bunch of people today, but my my magazines are limited to five, so I'm not going to. I'm going to do something else yeah. instead. It, yeah, it's, I was only legally allowed to have five, so I didn't go out and shoot a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. It's like who who would think that way? <laughs> who would think that way? Uh, no one. But politicians use that kind of stuff to. to yeah, get because the people yeah. outside of our world have no idea, right? So they just like, yeah, yeah it sounds good. Ban mm-hmm. guns. Ban guns. Great. Well, uh, th- and not, not to go down a rabbit hole, but it, like one of the things that I've noticed with Canadians, uh, as, and, and and it's been really noticeable over the last two years, is this idea of like, um, uh, if it's not me, screw them. Like yes. if it's not me, gun owners, I don't know any gun owners, screw them. Vaccinated, yes. unvaccinated people, I don't know any, screw them. Put the screws to them, right? I, yeah. That's not me. That's I, I don't I don't care yeah. about those people. Uh, does this help? Uh, no, it doesn't. Oh, I don't care. Put the screws to them. It, it doesn't affect yeah. me, so I don't care. Yeah. yeah. And e- even if it doesn't help, because like I think the the example that we're seeing right now is like uh, vaccination mandates for the for the border when uh, Omicron gets through and like infects people who are vaccinated or unvaccinated. It, it doesn't help yeah. with infection. 
yet yeah. we're still putting it in place just to screw them. Just got to screw those people. Yeah. doesn't yeah. have to be effective. Just no. screw them because they're not me. It's disappointing. <laughs> that's, that's our world now. Yeah. Shouldn't be the way the Canada is, but it is. No, it shouldn't. But it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right, so that's, Anyways, that's, that's the news. my rant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now uh, it's a happier C- thing. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, CCFR legal fund donations. Uh, no new donations, but it, as we already said, it is coming up very fast. Uh, so if you're looking for a way to help the CCFR with this massive uh, court battle, you can donate. You can be, become a member or donate to the legal fund by sending an EMT to finance at firearmsrights.ca or go to the website. They'll have a, they have a link up there. You can donate through there. And they are running the, I think Kelly said, the last run of Neon Signs. So I don't know when that's up. I think it's up, what, end of the month or something? I don't know. But uh, uh, they're running their last contest. Every $10 gets you an entry to win one of the seat neon signs. So go donate, help, help, help the cause and maybe win a neon sign. Awesome. Let me get on to new gun stuff. New gun stuff is sponsored by bolt action coffee. We've been a brand ambassador for them for, for a bit and they are some awesome coffee. They're mm-hmm. roasted in small batches and yeah, it's some of the, Best coffee out there. You can get it by going to boltactioncoffee.com and use discount code SLAMFIRE, all capitals, one word. It's really good for growing beards, as you can see. Yeah. Yeah. Good, healthy beards, yeah. Put some hair on your face. (laughs) I have Uh... some... I have since I think I was 10, so I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know Bolt Action Coffee was around back then. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, uh, let's get into the new gun stuff. So uh, the first one I wanted to show, and this is one, I think I noticed it yesterday, and I love Mm. it. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, the Maple Ridge Armory Renegade Pump Action. Now, this is a first focal plane actually showcased this. And uh, one of their enterprising uh, guys molded some plastic and got a transfer oh. bar hooked up to the left side of his uh, MRA. It looked pretty good. Like it was slick. And uh mm. I hadn't watched it yet, but the idea that 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 all of a sudden makes a straight pull semi cool. It's fast too. And like um he was showing like doing a press check with it, and it's like, oh, that looks so good. Oh, because your your hands stay the same, right? Yeah. Press check, rotate it over. <laughs> oh, oh man. Mm, mm. Yeah, looks. Uh, and I mean, uh, totally homemade, right? You look at uh, yeah. the parts and whatnot on there. Totally homemade. He shows uh, in the video, like this is a long video. It's a, it's about an hour, and he shows all the stuff he did to uh, to fit it, and some of the some of the. Um, dead ends he he went down in terms of like uh builds and uh and that kind of thing yeah super super good video so i definitely recommend you check that out hmm. uh, and the next one uh is uh gray birch they have been releasing or are releasing the foundation chassis for the cz 457 uh hmm. which is really neat so the 457 is kind of their uh their precision 22 uh cz's and hmm. uh yeah, now they're now they've got this uh, this foundation uh, chassis for it, which is uh, pretty neat. Uh, and that's that's all I've got. Ooh. Oh, you're supposed to check your personal Facebook Messenger, Adriel. <laughs> uh, Facebook or Instagram? I don't see anything he in says, Facebook. He says Facebook personal. Yeah. Okay, it's Gray Birch. Maybe means Instagram. Oh, I see something on Instagram. <laughs> and he just clarified Facebook again. <laughs> Check this out. What? Oh, yeah. I don't know if he wants me to talk about that on air or not. But uh, <laughs> until I get a clear message, I will opt to not. 
So well, he's telling cool. you on air, so share it on air. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes. It's a it's a folding, so it's a, a folding takedown version of a 1022. So the, so you know they've Ooh. got the folding stock on the on that foundation. So they've got a folder and takedown. It's very oh. small. It's very small. Mm, very cool. cool. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. I don't know if fits in a case they've got uh bring the guns and cannolis and they've got like a couple of like cannoli pouches in this uh in this case cannolis wow finally bringing what the people are asking for <laughs> well, that someone's good. finally listening <laughs> that's that looks cool yeah yeah it's uh i like the idea it's neat very neat okay cool well thank you Graybridge, for adding that in there uh, let's get to the main topic. Who wants to take this one? I'll take it. Yeah. So, so one of the things that I've uh, that I do every once in a while, and I started doing this a, a long time ago because anytime I want to buy ammo, uh, you guys know that I'm really cheap, right? Like really cheap. <laughs> I look for my deals. I clip my coupons. Like I do all sorts of weird. I want to get the best deal possible. Um, so I've been maintaining this Google Sheet called Cheap Common Ammo Ammo in Canada since 2008. And every once in a while, I update it with uh, with whatever is new. So I have actually updated it with information for this year. I might have talked about this last year or not. So I've got just your standard blaster uh, cartridges in here or the stuff that I like. Um, and uh, I've got some prices in here. Now, anything that's bolded, price is about the same. So some of these prices are the same right now as they were last year. So stuff like the 762 okay. by 25 a lot of that Milserp stuff, same price uh, as it was last year. No change really there. Uh, the red box, like the non-corrosive stuff, that's got more expensive. Nine millimeter, all a little bit more expensive than last year or a lot more expensive than last yeah. year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looking at, at right around 36 cents per. Uh, I think that's it says brass. It should be aluminum. To the aluminum case stuff is the cheapest, right around 36 cents per round. Uh, your brass case stuff is right around 42 cents per round. I didn't include re- remanufactured in here. I can find them, but, uh, sometimes remanufactured can be cheaper as well. Yeah. Now, what does that compare to like last year or the year before? Well, nine millimeter last year, right around 33 cents per. You guys want to cry? Let me show you the, the year yeah, before that. I've seen it. Year, <laughs> year before, 20 cents for the aluminum oh, stuff. Yes, oh, yes. I remember that. I remember those prices. I do. I do. I do. Oh, the good old days. Yeah. This wasn't the worst, though. Like, the, it's it's more expensive. It's not 223 more expensive. 223 yeah. is, like, way up there. The, the cheapest stuff is, like, the cheapest stuff is still, uh, like, the barn all, if you can find it. I uh, only found Reliable Gun had some Barnall steel case, uh, 280 for 500 rounds. So right around 56 cents per. Um, at, but your brass case is right around like 73 cents per round uh, at the cheapest. Uh, and th- there's a variety of, of different places that have that and a, a variety of different manufacturers, but they're all right around that price point, whether it be Winchester M193 or a Gila or a Federal XM193. It's all right around 75 cents per round. Pretty expensive, in, in my opinion. For uh, last year, for that two two three, basically the same seventy cents per. But there was some steel case stuff right around fifty or forty six. I ended up getting some uh, Barnall last year for I think forty eight cents per. And I got a thousand rounds of that just to tide me over. Um, maybe I should have got more. But uh, <laughs> year before, two two three. 35 oh, cents per for oh, steel oh. for brass 40 cents per oh That's man quite a bit cheaper wow I mean, th- those were really cheap prices though that that was off, off the tail end of uh of a rush uh, if i go to 2016 223 uh was uh, a little bit cheaper for some of the stuff a little bit more expensive for the brass case it was right around 57 cents at, at the cheapest uh and then if you go to 2008 well we had even cheaper for 556 five, back then you could you could get it for twenty seven cents wow. per round back then. Jeez, I don't know um, what the return rate is on stocks versus ammo, but I think like if you would have bought a whole bunch of five five six in two thousand eight, mm, I think you'd be beaten stock market. <laughs> <laughs> Quite potentially, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd have it for half the price, right? I don't think inflation's been nearly that much, so definitely, uh, definitely some good good value there. 
Yeah. Uh, when you get to 762 by 39, some of the corrosive stuff, same price. Marstar and, and some other places have not changed their pricing. Uh, so if you're looking for like new production steel case, uh, Marstar's got some of the uh, Norinco red box, which they say like we haven't tested whether it's corrosive or not. So it might not be non-corrosive. Uh, Bullseye's got some stuff on stripper clips. So if you're looking for steel case corrosive on stripper yeah, clips. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, they've got that for 39 cents per round. Uh, the cheapest stuff is still like the the Norinco surplus was right around like 29 cents per if you buy like a big crate of uh, 1500. Uh, and then the cheapest non-corrosive was uh, Gotenda had some Barnall steel case for 58 cents per. So Mo, this is for your near Type 81. Yeah, but I can't. You, but I can't use the steel cases. Oh, they're all steel cases. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all steel yeah. cases with this one. Yeah. I don't know. There, there, there's. You can get brass cased for seven sixty by thirty. Do you mean steel case or steel bullet or steel core? Uh, I think both. I, oh, I, see, I don't yeah. know why you can't steel case. The stuff Indoor I ranges bought don't the, allow anything that sticks to a magnet. A lot. Of yeah, them. and the stuff I bought a few years ago in bulk, I'm pretty sure is not steel anything. So, huh? I gotta go. I, look, I gotta go got. grab a box. <laughs> it's gonna be magnetic. Like either. It's, um, Oh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's not a common SMB? brand. It's a European one. Um, SMB. No, no, no. It's it's. Uh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Anyways, that's that stuff out there. Uh, 308, look at all the blanks I have here. There used to be like a lot more uh, options for surplus uh, 762 by 51 or, or 308 for, for everyone else. Uh, right now there is only... And this, I only found it at one store. At this price, everyone else had it for quite a bit more, like 450, 460 kind of a thing. But oh. GoTenda had Norinco, Milserp uh, 308. So this is like steel case, blaster ammo. Uh, they had it for 369 for 500, which is basically the same price as it was last year. That's cheap though. And there are no other places that have that th- that kind of pricing. So if you need 308, I'd recommend to get some of that stuff because that's very that's a very good value. And I don't see it anywhere else right now. Uh, 760 by 54, all the same, all the same. It's all Milserp uh, stuff that I've got here. Um, there was some maybe non-corrosive stuff that Lever Arms had, um, which I actually got some from them, and I, I tested it to be non-corrosive. A buddy of mine got some, and he tested his to be corrosive. So it varies on a lot. Like I, I think when they were making this stuff, they just whatever primers they had, they just stuck them in, and maybe they're non-corrosive, or maybe they're old stock corrosive. So mm. okay, I know what it is. It's mm-hmm. uh, gecko and it's Hungarian and it's uh, lead, lead and brass. Hmm. But that is for uh, nine hundred. Yeah, can of nine hundred six ninety nine. Yeah, that 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 stuff doesn't sound like your your thirty cent blaster ammo. No, <laughs> a little bit more yeah. than that. Probably nice though, bit. right? Yeah. yeah. I wonder what the surplus stuff was before. Not bad. So like the 762 by 54. Oh my, no. 762 by 54 used to, be, used to be able to get it for 25 cents each. And now it's 45. Eh, sweet. It's a eh, 20, it's 20 cent, almost double. Yeah. 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 Uh, the 762 by 25 used to be quite cheap. 10 cents around. Like that, like look at the difference between nine millimeter and seven sixty by twenty five, and you can see the the reason why that would be really attractive, especially like that Norinco seven sixty two by twenty five pistol. You could be shooting it at less than half the price. Yeah, of nine. Whereas yeah. these, yeah, these days, uh, well, I mean, it is half the price, I guess. Again, it is twenty two cents versus like forty cents. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Seven sixty two by hmm. twenty five. Hey. Eh? Maybe time to look at uh, look at that <laughs> stuff again. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, uh, uh, it's something I, I try to do every year just to uh, just to see what prices are doing. It's always interesting. We're uh, we're kind of following along with what the U.S. is doing. I'd imagine that five five six price is going to get down. That's too much. Yeah. Seventy six yeah. seventy five cents around oh. for for the for the component cost in it. It's too much. I'd imagine yeah, that price I... is going to come down. Um, I don't know if nine millimeter. You okay. gotta fi- you gotta figure all those like let's say new AR owners in the U.S. have now filled up on their ammo, so I, I think maybe maybe, maybe. <laughs> and then we'll we'll start seeing yeah. it come down. But yeah, 
Well, so you gotta remember though, inflation. also like I don't think we're gonna see prices go down until maybe maybe winter time because now we're getting into the season where everyone wants to go out competition shooting or weather's getting nice yeah. they want to go out shooting and and yeah, will the inflation that uh canada and the u.s are seeing right now mean that we'll never get ammo that cheap again that could because be as well you look at that those 2008 prices we'll never see those again but that's because of inflation so inflation in the yeah. last year or two is is really bad uh, yeah. maybe we just won't see those prices anymore. Maybe they'll always be like a little, like 10% more than they were before. Yeah, I think that's okay. fair. Yeah, I, if instead of 40 cents, if they were like 44 cents per round of 223, okay, yeah. I'll be fine with that. <laughs> I don't think it'll get yeah, out for anytime soon. Like, but even shot, shot shells are going up in price, clays are going up in price. Uh, clays for us from last year went up six percent this year. Six that makes sense. That's yeah. standard inflation right there. You know, yeah. The three years prior to that combined was like six percent. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. And we, like, we got told our, our ammo's going up, targets are going up, everything's going up. Hmm. Yeah. So I think the the play right now, if you if you could put some money in the RRSPs, or you could buy some Norinco surplus three oh eight uh for seventy four cents mm-hmm. per and buy Precious uh, metals. <laughs> assembled precious metals i think is how, yeah. how you you could justify it right yeah it's you're buying ammo futures for 308 ammo futures <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> uh brand is mentioning that uh tendon had tenda had uh bulk score buckshot for 60 cents per yeah that's fantastic yeah. and um the, the price of slugs uh, hasn't like those you can still find those score low recoil Slugs for one sixty nine for two fifty. Mm-hmm. Lead's more expensive, but but they're yeah. still able to sell those for for fantastic. And the buckshot for for cheap as well. Yeah, sixty cents a round for buckshot. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if anything's Very cheaper right now than it was before. I don't think so. I don't think so. Pretty cheap. I'd be very uh, supply, surprised if stuff yeah, was cheaper. I, I, I'm pretty sure Gotenda had prices of buckshot cheaper than I've ever seen, which is really weird. Hmm. So I, I bought some last year for like a pretty good price, but uh, this most recent sale that they ran was even cheaper than that. Maybe they lose money on that stuff, and then they like to expect people to get other stuff though. Yeah, lo- lo- yeah, Lost that would make, yeah, that would make sense, right? Because then you're going to order, and they're like, okay, I might as well pick up a few other things at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about all I have. So. And wasn't it an in-store pickup, too, from what I remember? Which, uh, no, the buckshot was uh, mail order as well. Oh, okay. Okay, I mm-hmm. thought it was just in-store. Yeah, some of the stuff is in-store only. Some of those lever arms ones that I showed, for example, are in-store only, um, just because their their cost to ship was too high. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of those, yeah, it's, it's nice to have a couple of options uh, because then you can see some of them might include shipping or some of them might, like, shipping's extra. So uh, what I'll do is uh, for the show notes for the show, I'll, uh, I'll stick a, a link to that spreadsheet in there. It's got links to where you can buy all that stuff and, uh, and where these different uh, ammo prices are at. That's great. Ooh. I see. I'm looking at your spreadsheet. You're living in the future. <laughs> <laughs> the last updated February 11th. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, February yeah. February 11th, 2022. <laughs> oh, that's tomorrow. Okay, good. There we go. I don't know why I spoke <laughs> that, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, I just looked at it. I was like, oh, cool. It was updated tomorrow. <laughs> From the future. <laughs> I'm not good with dates. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So, general consensus, prices are going up and... Not going to see him settle for a while, or do you? Where do you think they're actually going to settle here? I think uh, if you've got to do some shooting in the next year, buy some Barnall, like get some cheap steel case crap and uh, burn that stuff up during the week, during the year, and then uh, look for prices to get cheaper in the fall or winter. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> or else buy another <laughs> buy another crate of uh, of Barnall. Yeah. 
I can't justify getting brass case at like 75 cents per. Uh, it's got to be down to oh. like 50 ish somewhere for me to buy like a whole bunch. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Well, let's move on to listener feedback. Listener feedback is sponsored by Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot bluing, parkerizing, and Cerakote finishes, as well as wood refinishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmith.ca. And we do have a couple emails here from what I saw. Um, Angel, you want to take the first one? You bet. From Brett. Uh, from Brett, sorry. Hey guys, I remember Angel talking about using one of those 45 degree rails for a secondary red dot. This is what I came up with. It's a Vortex Venom 3 MOA dot sitting beside a 1 to 8 by 24 Vortex Strike Eagle LPVO. The rifle is chambered for 223 Wild. The main optic is set up for 55 grain FMJs. I'm using the secondary optic for grouse using 55 grain bullets loaded up over 4 grains of trail boss giving the muzzle velocity at around 1130 FPS, about the standard 22 LR. It kills gross really nice. Just thought I'd share with you guys. Love the show. F. Trudeau. (laughs) I like how it rhymes. Yeah, yeah. But he put a heart. That is some powder puff 223 loads. (laughs) Trail boss. I love it. When I first saw it and I saw like gross hunting with like a a 556, I'm like, oh my God, you're going to brutalize it gross but no 11 100 a thousand uh, fps that's all right i like it I, this is like a three gun loadout the yeah. the lpvo on top and the and the red dot on the 45 like that's definitely a three gun deal oh yeah uh, that is open class all the way mm-hmm. but i guess this is open class for uh coyotes and grouse as well yeah hmm. that's interesting. that's awesome <laughs> yeah super interesting he's got his red dot far up forward you can you can either put them uh, way at the back or, or far forward. I like the far forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'll take the next one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hi, Kyle. For the magazine mod you made on the Grisan MC three twelve Inertia X semi shotgun, is the tube thread Beretta Benelli pattern? Did you have to cut the end of the tube where there are no threads? Thanks, Ed. And I saw this one earlier, and so I brought the Gersan out so I can show. Now, I don't have the tube here. has to have threads Uh, on it. Oh, no, no. But he's wondering about the pattern, the thread pattern Mm -hmm. for extensions, and it is a Benelli Supernova thread pattern. So you buy an extension for for a uh, Supernova, and yes, you do have to trim... The threads down just a little bit at the end. Yeah, just at the end, you got to trim just the edge down just a little bit. Hmm. So, but yeah, uh, I knew I was actually kind of expecting that question on what thread they were because yeah, finding a extension branded for a Gersan probably. Not going to happen, but yeah, they are a uh, supernova thread pattern. So there'll be lots of extensions out there for that. Hmm. Kind of making me want to get one of these from a kid when he gets into like 12 gauge on his three gun, Kyle. <laughs> well, 500 just, bucks. Well, See, so you have to, after this weekend. Hmm. Did you cut any coils off the recoil spring? No, I didn't. Sh- shouldn't have to. Not. You're running really. You're asking it to to run seven eighths no. ounce loads, though, right? Or have no, you tried? No, I'm not. I'm asking it to run a one ounce load, doing mm-hmm. twelve hundred feet per second. That should do that, and it's not doing exactly. That one ounce. And it it wouldn't. But it does an ounce and an eighth, so, right? So, you know, spoiler on the video that hasn't come out yet. <laughs> I in order to get that to cycle, I actually had to have it off my shoulder. Oh. Uh. As soon as you put it in the shoulder, it acted like a inertia shotgun up against a brick wall. That's where you're supposed to brag a little bit. Like, I'll be able to hold that thing so tightly. <laughs> 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 Michael. <laughs> yeah. 
But you said that the outs and eighth worked fine in it. That's all I yeah. use is outs and eighth because yeah. anytime I'm shooting three gun, like you could try running like a light powder puff load for your like clays and that kind of thing. But mm-hmm. invariably, you get a spinner in the middle there. And if you throw like a seven eighths ounce load at that, it's not going to do anything. You need yeah. the extra well, lead of that thing, right? I think getting an inertia shotgun running seven eighths is going to be a, a challenge. Yeah. Hmm. I tried those 26 gram. I actually did the conversion. They're 0.91 ounces of lead and yeah my my benelli wouldn't cycle them which i didn't yeah. expect like they they are super light it was hoping and it was still pretty much useless except for clays but uh Ooh. yeah the, the like the one ounce 1200 feet per second loads they're they're just great they're a good kind of middle ground load like yeah the ounce and an eighth they're nice for knocking stuff over but for just general all around no issues running the one ounce doing and i'll, I'll do like a seven and a half and not, not a little bit wider a little bit wider of a choke and just send more lead and just ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the one ounce you got to go tighter choke aim a little bit more less recoil <laughs> or you could go with the big stuff and just let her fly <laughs> yeah yeah but, cool but yeah so that's a little more insight on the Gersan. So thanks, Ed. Thanks, Brett, for the emails. And if you want to ask a question and have it read on the show, send us an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Uh, we don't have any Patreon, Instagram, or Facebook reviews. Uh, no new Patreon supporters. Uh, same thing with Patreon. If you want to support Support us. You can go to Patreon and find us on Patreon and pledge a monthly whatever you want, however much you want. Uh, not required, but greatly appreciated for every Patreoni out there. Uh-huh. Uh, we got any shout outs? I was just going to shout out the gang at uh, Peterborough. They put on a good match and it's a good group of people. So thank you. I'm so jealous about how many Ipsic matches you have around you. Like I know. Yeah. Th- no such right. No such right now. Well, or, when or things are really. open, when things are open, yes. But I also drive to a lot of I mean I, you guys do too, but yes, I, I'm in a good I'm in a good spot where I get the Quebec matches and I get the Ontario matches. So mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> yeah. Andrew was just mentioning here, he ran about hundred rounds of three inch and three and a half inch waterfowl loads to break in his Gersan. 3512, and now it runs seven and a half handicap and low recoil slugs just fine. Handicap's extra oomph, though. That's usually ounce and an eighth and pretty, pretty stanky, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's what I'm thinking is that I just got to break it in. So I'm going to run a bunch of, uh, it's, it's the three inch. So I, I got a bunch of buckshot here that's just been sitting here waiting to be used. So I'm going to run that through it and see. Maybe I'll throw it. In- Throw like twenty five rounds of buckshot, just hammer it and do that. Grab the uh, the cheap steel duck shot Winchester hundred round pack. That's the cheapest, like the stankiest only, rounds you can get. The only problem is, and I got check. I he got the full choke in there, and he Ooh. didn't give me the other chokes. So Ooh. I don't want to run th- steel through it. Mm-hmm. I will run lead on threads. And looking at the pictures, it looks like the lead, the thread cleaner is the same as my Benelli. So you run 25 rounds steel. of lead through it with on just the threads. That's that's a non-issue. So yeah. that's because even buckshot, I'm a little going through a full choke. I'm kind of, eh. it's probably fine. Probably fine with the with the buckshot, but yeah, steel shot. No, I'm not doing that on without a, a choke or something protecting mm. those threads. Mm. Unless something catastrophic happens to this shotgun, I'm going to be buying one in, in like a year or two. Cause yeah. like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really loving what I'm hearing so far. I'll probably get the three and a half inch so I can run the, uh, uh, the non Sammy, the realistic spec with the, sh- the three and a half inches, uh, shells. And, yeah. uh, yeah, run it as a backup three gun shotgun. Sounds so good. The price is yeah. fantastic too. Yeah. I'm just finding that there's a, li- it's not just the, Okay, open the load port and be done. You see, they'll still got to do a little bit of stuff with it, which I know you're not afraid of. <laughs> no. <laughs> Get the Dremel out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Adriel, do you got a shout out? Nope. No? Uh, I want to shout out 
everybody who came out on Saturday helped with the range. We had a few guys that weren't haven't been out there helping with the wall out there on Saturday. So thank you to those guys and thank you in advance to the guys that come out this weekend to help us finish it off. And with that, we're going to sign off. So go check us out on Gun Owners of Canada. Give us a like on Facebook. We are currently at 2,940. Looking to get to 3K. Uh, okay. Go yeah. Go give us a subscribe on YouTube. Give us a review on Facebook. Join the CCFR. And we will see you all next week. Later, bro. See ya. Uh, Kelly. So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.